Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I want to talk about the setting that I'm currently playing my D&D game in. Um, I don't own the rights to this setting, so I'm going to show off a little bit of it, but not too much, because, you know, they put a lot of work into it, obviously. Um, Andrew Kolb did. We're playing in Neverland. Uh, the group that I was in was in my homebrew setting, and I was developing my homebrew setting thinking at some point I would put it out there into the universe for purchase. Um, but then all of the OGL shenanigans happened and I kind of got discouraged, so I made the decision to switch to Neverland. We were at a good point to switch. And then of course, WotC backtracked and released everything under the Creative Commons. So I will at some point go back and keep working on my own setting. But for now, the game that I'm currently running is in Neverland. Um, I feel like it doesn't show up very well on the camera that I'm using, but this is like a gold foil on the front. It, this book is absolutely beautiful. Um, so let's go into it. Um, there's a couple of things I really like. Um, so you can see I have, I have a note here of the current day in the, uh, in the, the calendar. Um, I really like the calendar. Um, it's got a lot of detail. I like the phases of the moon and what's shown. Um, I also like the, the, the hours. Um, having this made it really easy when my players had literally, their characters had been awake in game for um, uh, like four hours and they wanted to take a long rest. And I said, listen, guys, I've been tracking the hours meticulously. You've only been awake for four hours. Are you going to try and sit here and rest? Like you're going to try and sit and just wait until you're able to take another long rest. And they realized like, no, we can't do that. So they kept moving. Um, and this, the reason this, this is possible is because it uh, uses the, the fact that there's four hours in each segment, right? This is called one clock. So eight to noon is one clock. It's four hours. Um, and that's used a bunch in the types of random encounters that they have. Um, and then there's a bunch of other stuff like, you know, next starfall. You have to buy the book to see what that's about, although you could probably have paused this and read a fair amount. Um, I'll show you the map of the actual island. It's a hex crawl, okay? Um, there's, there's that map. Here's the actual hexes, right? Um, and there's like a little description right here that just tells you like what it all is. You know, they're facing pages, so that's nice. Um, and then when you get into it, my, my players started on hex one because I you know that's the way I am they're moving into hex two at the start of our next game um, and I've been working on you know thinking of what I'm going to do for the random encounters that they have and I think I'm probably going to curate that list you know the the and something I decided to do which is um, completely different from what the book recommends is I decided well there's four hours in one clock and it takes four hours to explore a hex or to just walk across a hex completely I'm gonna have four encounters um, and I randomly rolled in hex number one and there were two combat encounters and I had kind of forgotten that my players were all playing first level PCs I thought there were some second level PCs but um, it turns out, you know, because some of them had switched characters and they decided to move back, uh, they wanted to play a different character. And the way I do it is, you know, if you pick a different character, you want you want to change characters. You are starting one level behind everyone, but you have half of the experience points to get to the next level. So everyone was starting at level one with half of the experience needed to get to level two. So by the end of the session, they had all gotten to level two. I thought they were level two, so some of these things that I allowed to be random encounters um, almost killed everyone. Like I, I literally had to, you know, do a little hand waviness, and you know, without without them noticing, I cut everyone's HP in half. All of the bad guys, I cut their HP in half twice during that encounter because if not, all of the players were going to die, and it wasn't going to be fun for anyone. Um, so I, you know, hex number two, I am going to curate that list I am gonna go through here and I'm probably not gonna roll for combat I'm gonna say okay we're gonna have some NPC encounters that's gonna be it um, and you can see there's a, there's so much on this one page for hex number two like if I was rolling randomly I could run hex number two for 50 different groups and probably never get the exact same result so that's one other thing that I really love about this setting, it's, it's why I chose this setting over all of the other settings that I've got. I've got a couple other settings. Um, 
But one thing that I really love is how much you can change everything. And I could go through and I could pick specific things and then go through and pick a completely different set of things. Um, so that is something that I find really cool. And let's look, um, I'll just show you the, um, the table of contents. So it, you know, what's going on, themes and expansions and how it works. Okay, so they, they detail a lot of uh, like the mechanics of the world itself, exploring Neverland, travel in time. I showed you a little bit of that. Um, so it, it talks about shortcuts you can take um, which, you know, my players right now have none of these because they just got here. But eventually they are going to learn, you know, some of those things. They're going to, you know, they're going to get those things. It's got the island routine, so it, it goes through all of this. Um, it's got fun and recreation, which I actually made um, a calendar just in an Excel sheet. And I just blocked out, like, all of the days. And I said, okay, you know, here are some of these things. This is when this is going to happen because I want my players to be able to interact with this stuff. Um, I think this stuff is really cool. I want my players to be able to interact with it. So I've blocked out a bunch of these things that are going to happen. Um, every single, you know, like I think the next one that's going to happen is like in three or four days. My players are going to hear about it because at that point they will have been on, you know, we're going to be several sessions in at this point by the time they hear about that stuff. Um, so that's something that I thought was really cool was, you know, not just, you know, here's this and you can fight everything, um, actually breaking it out. And there's actually, um, it's like there's, so let's see, I've got some advanced rules, miscellaneous, let's see, where is it? Um, okay, yeah, here it is. So we've got the island itself, okay, that's all of the hexes, but then there's also Elfame, or Elfam, um, which is almost like a second mini campaign setting inside Neverland um, and it's all to do with fairies um, so I thought that was really cool is just another um, like another added layer to this because you could have just put all of the fairy stuff somewhere on the island but instead it's like a whole other thing you know it's it's got its own section it's not just a hex it's a whole thing I thought that was really cool um, there's a bunch of resources in the back of the book to be able to use. There's some there's some pre-generated characters as well that you can use, and the pre-generated characters are third level, um, which is why I was I felt comfortable moving them to Neverland when I thought they were all second level because I was like, well, it's one level. I didn't realize everyone was first level, but now we're second level, so it's all good. Um, so yeah, that is that is the Neverland campaign setting for Five E. Um, Andrew Kolb. It's, uh, I think it's a really cool setting. I, I bought this because my wife loves Peter Pan and I thought, oh, at some point I'll run this setting for her. Um, and then I needed, uh, I needed a setting so that I could keep playing because I didn't want to stop playing. Um, even, even if I never was able to publish my setting, I still wanted to keep playing. And at least for now, I was going to keep playing 5e. And of course now all of those troubles are gone. I needed a setting this was immediately the one that I thought of. I didn't even entertain the idea of busting out my Sword Coast Adventures guide or my Ravnica. Like, I, I didn't even think about that. This one was on my shelf. It was my go-to because of how cool and detailed a lot of this stuff is. And there is also a lot of room for me to add in my own flair. Um, like one of the things uh, that they're gonna see in hex number two is all of the caves and the book encourages me, it encourages the dungeon master to create a cave dungeon. And something I've decided, I haven't told my players, hopefully none of them are watching, something I've decided is that every time you go back to the caves, they have moved. It's a different cave system, which is gonna provide you know, a bunch of different opportunities. Um, and there's still gonna be some things that are, you know, there's gonna be treasure in the caves, obviously. That's not going to be something that changes. Like, it's not going to be, oh, a pointless cave explorer. There's always going to be treasure in the caves if you want to go into the caves. But every single day that passes, it's a different... And, of course, you know, my players, unless they go and explore a new cave every single day, it, there may be two or three caves is what I'll have to generate. But I like the idea of, because it's Neverland and it's fantasy and it's this crazy world where it's, it's kind of built on imagination... 
um, all the caves are always different. The caves are always changing. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm stealing the idea that is brought up by the name, the Caves of Chaos, and I'm actually making it caves that are constantly changing. Um, so I will put a link to the Amazon page where I bought this. It's not an affiliate link. I am not connected to Andrew Kolb in any way. I'm not connected to Neverland or Peter Pan in any way. I just thought this was a really fun setting. And it was my go-to when I needed a setting so that we could keep playing because I didn't want to develop my own world anymore. Um, so this is, this is my recommendation. If you are looking for a third party setting and it's, it's not very big, you know, it's, it's pretty small. I don't know, like compared to my fingers, it's very small, okay? Um, but it's got a lot of detail packed in there and I think it's got a lot of fun packed in there which is really what Neverland is all about. So this is my recommendation. Um, if you liked this video, you wanna see more things like this, um, where I just grab a D&D &D book and I talk about it, please like this video, subscribe, leave a comment below what your go-to setting is. Um, if you have your own setting, leave some details about it. Make, you know, pitch us your setting so that we can get excited about it for you. Um, or excited about it with you, um, or if you have a different setting that is your go-to, I'd love to hear about it. I'm looking to buy more settings because I like having the option of, you know, if the players want to travel between worlds, I want to have options for them. So um, he did make another one, uh, Andrew Kolb. He made another one that was Oz, uh, which I just haven't bought yet. Some of the reviews seem a little iffy, but, you know, based on, uh, based on this book, um, it seems like maybe it's kind of similar like it's it's four or five e but it's a little bit system agnostic so i'm gonna buy that one i'll check it out if you'd like to see a video when i buy that one let me know um please subscribe if you have not and check out any of the other videos i have on the channel um i'm currently doing a series right now where i'm rolling a d20 every single day in february and uh, yeah, that, that series is ongoing. There's been a couple of videos where I rolled stat arrays. So um, if you want to see dice rolling or just, you know, someone who is not a professional in the D&D community giving their thoughts on some D&D stuff, then like and subscribe. I'm going to keep, I'm going to bring more D&D content to the channel um, because, you know, I, I make videos that interest me. So there you go. Have a good day and uh, go check out the D20 roll for today. No spoilers in this video. You have to go check it out yourself. And I will see you all in the next video.